My name is Anisha Musti. I'm 15 years old and I created an algorithm that detects Parkinson's disease. This is my story. Running an organization, a lot of people don't take you seriously because I'm like a five foot one, 15 year old girl. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's on them. Their loss. One of the prerequisites to achieving anything is just finding the best people and bringing them together, which is only possible once we start accepting people from everywhere. Hey, I'm Danny Washington, and welcome to the Genius Generation, the podcast about young people who are changing our world in big ways. On this week's show, my guest is 15-year-old Anisha Musty, who created a powerful new tool to detect Parkinson's disease by harnessing the power of quantum computing. Say what? Quantum computing? That sounds intimidating, right? I agree. This is complicated stuff. But stick with me, because trust me, you're not going to want to miss this story. Anisha, it's so great to have you on the show today. Now, when I hear the words quantum computing, I am completely baffled. Can you try and break that down for me? What is a quantum computer? So, like most people, when I first heard of it, I was baffled as well. And then once I actually started looking into it, it actually became a lot simpler. Essentially, a quantum computer is a type of super powerful computer that uses something called qubits to make calculations. These computers have the potential to be a million times faster, or even more than that, than the fastest computers that we have today. Wow. So in the future, are we all going to have quantum computers sitting on our desks? Not exactly. Quantum computers are different from the computers that we use every day. They're not supposed to be the next iPhone, but they can solve problems that classical computers can't even attempt. For example, simulating an atom. This new approach to computation is actually what allowed me to create my algorithm. Right. Your discovery. Let's get into that. What started you down this path? So my great uncle had Parkinson's disease and he had it for a long time. He was diagnosed pretty late. It's a disorder in your brain that can cause shaking, stiffness, and difficulty with walking, balance, and coordination. It mostly affects people once they begin aging. And we slowly watched it progress. And unfortunately, with Parkinson's disease, it's one of those things that just don't have a treatment. Really, the best thing that we can do for the disease at this point is finding it and detecting it as early as possible. The symptoms aren't really detectable to the visible eye until like stage two or three. So. What I did is I created an algorithm using quantum machine learning. So that's running a artificial intelligence algorithm on a quantum computer. And it was able to detect whether or not a patient had Parkinson's disease based on their voice. So it extracted features from their voice, including pitch, jitter, and all of these things. And they compared that to a non-Parkinson's patient. And they said, okay, do we have it? Do we not? And it continuously trained until it was able to do that with a 90% accuracy rate. Wow, I didn't know that Parkinson's disease can be detected based on changes in your voice. Only a computer can figure that out. Like if we see a person just walking down the street and hear them talk, we're not going to hear anything. But a computer has the amazing ability to actually look at things at that level and detect it. Wow, that is incredible. Now walk me through the day when you had your moment, your breakthrough. My breakthrough honestly took me a while. At some point in there, I was like, maybe this won't happen because there were just so many problems I was countering because especially with the data part of it, that was probably like the biggest barrier. It was just random data that I found on the internet, unformatted. So there were so many changes that had to be made. And every time that something would be fixed, something would something new would come up. It was kind of like you fix one leak and another one comes up. And then just one day I was sitting there, I made one change that I didn't even think would do anything. And then I clicked run and it just did and I got the result at the end and my mind I was I couldn't even process what was going on in front of me and I just screamed I was like mom dad and my parents were like are you okay and I was like yeah I figured it out I got it that's incredible and I know that it had to be a very special moment especially because you've witnessed your great uncle having to grapple with this disease and what do you think it means for the future of research about Parkinson's disease So I definitely think it is 
A, a step in the right direction for Parkinson's disease because this can be transformed into an app that people can have on their phone. They can just input their voice into it. So even just a small risk, if they're aware of that risk, we can end up saving like a lot more lives or prolonging the lifespan of so many people. But on a second note, it can also just improve the overall field of voice analyzing disease detection. So what I've been doing more research into recently is how we can use voice analysis to detect depression or PTSD or other types of trauma based on your voice. I'm so excited for all the things that you have coming in your future because this type of computing is definitely where we're headed. And hopefully what you're doing will inspire others. In fact, it sounds like it already has. Tell me about your organization. The organization that I run today is called Humanity, and we are a nonprofit organization that strives to educate and give resources to students worldwide to teach them about quantum computing. So at this point, we have 15 members around the world, all high school students, which is an amazing thing to say. And we host workshops, hackathons, conferences, and we are now working on a resources initiative where we're bringing in guest writers, guest posters, and we're getting as many people as possible to contribute to a global hub of quantum computing resources. That's incredible. <laughs> and and I'm sure that community is going to continue to grow. Have you run up against any obstacles as a young female CEO? A lot of people don't take you seriously because I'm like a five foot one, 15 year old girl. And people just look at me and they're like, so is community like project club that you're doing and I'm like nope it's a nonprofit organization it's registered and they're like oh really are you sure and I'm like 100% sure there have been times where I've showed up to events and people are just like maybe that's not the most formal outfit for this event whereas a lot of men are wearing jeans and a t-shirt and if I show up in the same thing I'm held to a double standard and those are just things where I'm like why do I care right I'm comfortable wearing my jeans and a t-shirt. If you don't like it, I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> At that point, I can just talk to people who don't care about what I'm wearing because that's not what I'm here to talk about or what I bring to the table. I really believe that a lot of our problems in society stem from the fact that we aren't able to accept people who look or act different from a preconceived notion of this is what it should be. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I can do my best to convince people that I am really what I am. And if they don't believe me, that's on them. Their loss. Yeah, definitely their loss. Once we actually start accepting that other people have the same capability, despite them being like of a different sexuality, of a different gender, a different race, we actually start to make huge strides in collaboration which is one of the prerequisites to achieving anything, is just finding the best people and bringing them together, which is only possible once we start accepting people from everywhere. Beautifully said. Wow, I'm blown away. Anisha, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here on the Genius Generation podcast. If you want to connect with Anisha or find out more about community, go to community.tech to learn all about it. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to rate and subscribe. The Genius Generation is a podcast created by Seeker and Trax. The show is hosted by me, Danny Washington. Emily Feld and Evan Hall are our producers. Caroline Ralph, Brian Simagala, and Matt Morales are our Seeker producers. Our editor and sound designer is John Pappas. Our executive producers are Brett Kushner, Michelle Smalley, and Brian Pendergast. Our PA is Navani Otero. Thanks for listening. Funding for the Genius Generation comes from the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations, investing in our common future. How do we create change that lasts? True transformation happens by changing the system, not just the situation. It's a bit like the difference between saving a tree and creating a new sustainable way of doing forestry. Ashoka is a global community of thousands of change makers who are committed to making systemic change and empowering others to do the same. We get it. Changing systems sounds intimidating, but there's nothing to fear. Join Ashoka for a three-part learning journey to uncover issues you care about, identify the root causes, and start building a solution. Learn more by visiting changemaking.net or check out the link in the show notes.
ancient Greece. <laughs> well, I suppose that's what some people say. But was it all that long ago? Those days of magic and prophecy. Oh my God! Of princesses and wicked kings. Take it, Father. Take the child. Your Grace, we dare not touch the child of Zeus. Of lovely nymphs and terrifying monsters. Oh boy. I suppose you can call it ancient if you like, or mythological. Me, I call it essential listening. It's live from Mount Olympus. Young mortal listeners most cordially invited. Do subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Support for Tracks comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is Tracks from PRX.